unstoppable guy and put your glory go on in us. So to start this morning, uh, I want to have a race. And even though I promised not to run around, I didn't promise that nobody else would. So I'm going to ask, we have a couple of runners, AJ, Micah, Justice, where's Emily, Ella, where are you? Where are you? Come on up. We have some runners. We're going to run a race today. Give them a hand. Yeah, give them a hand. Give them a hand. So I think it's Sunday morning. It's summertime. Why not start off the day with a little bit of a race? We're going to today talk about a race that we get to run. So why not? I mean, they're younger than us. Why not have them run instead of us? So here we're, this is what we're going to do. They have no idea what they're about to do, by the way. This is the deal. Here is your starting line. Come on down. Here's your starting line. Emily does not want to do this right now. She's going, what are you doing? All right, here's the deal. You're running to this stool and back. Oh, kicked off the shoes. All right, that's good, smart. See, Emily's going to win this race. She's not, she's not holding back. All right, rules. If you push someone over, you're out. If you fall, you're out. Don't fall. All right, don't get hurt. No jumping over pews. Do not knock over communion table. Do not. I'll get in trouble, okay? So here, stool, back to here. <laughs> You're so ready. Come on, you got this. All right. Now, you, you, you all know who you think is going to win, don't you? Yeah, all right, I'm just, you're sizing it up. I'm going to get out of your way. You're going to hang out back there? What are you, giving them a head start? Come on, man. Get in there. All right. On your marks. Get set. Hold on. Hold on. We're going to add a little bit of interest to this. All right. I need you to put this around your legs. And you can sit right in that pew. Sit down right in there. Just put them right on. You're like, how do I do this? I've never even seen a headband before. Yep. Just put it right around your yep, both feet. There you go. Yeah, both feet in there. Yep. <laughs> Pull it up. Keep going. All right. Above the knees. All right. Put this one below your knees. All right. Here. Let's see. We've got jump ropes. Hmm. All right. Are you pretty strong? Sure. Sure? Okay. All right. That's what I need you to do. Come here, AJ. Get behind him. No, you don't, you, no, you're not, he's, he's pulling you. You got the good end of the deal. I am resistant. Here, hold on to these. Okay. Wait, don't let go. Okay. 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 You said you were really fast, right? Okay. You're really fast. Okay. Well, hmm. Let's see. Um, no, no. Here. Here we go. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Hold on to those, would you? This one, too. You got that? You good? All right. All right, line up. Come on, line up. Stool and back. What? Yeah, you're good. All right. Got a good grip? Here, why don't you twist your hand right around that? Make sure he does it. There you go. Yeah, just hold, you're, just, you're just holding him. That's all. Pretend he's the horse. You're just reining him in. All right, you got it. You're good. Stool and back on your mark. Get set. Go. Come on, come on, run the band, run the band. Come on, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. Hey, all right, all right. Winner, winner. Way to go. Hey, good job. What? No? No? Oh, yeah? Here, one me. Yeah, hurry here, right here. Hey, good race. Give him a hand. Give him a hey, good job. Good pulling. Hey, Mike, good job. What? Oh, she wants a prize. No? No? All right. Great job. Great job. Give me a um, Pastor Larry's, uh, the, the whole cafe is open to you on him. No? No? Okay. All right. Well, today, we're going to talk about, oh, here, I'll get that weight off your shoes. There you go. We're going to, you're good. You're good. Thank you. We're going to talk today about running the race, and specifically running to Jesus. But in order to do that, 
we're going to talk about three things that hold us back. Because we all have a race to run, amen? Hopefully your, your race doesn't include uh, somebody pulling on you or, or headbands around your feet, or, but it might. But we're going to talk about three things that hold us back. And then we're going to talk about three things that we need to know so that we can effectively run this race and run to Jesus. But to do that, we're going to start in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. So if you have your Bibles with you, open up to Hebrews chapter 12. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to, uh, to bless this time that we have. I thank you, Father, for the, the worship that we've been able to enjoy and, and to, to focus on you through. Lord, as we open your word, we ask you to, to use it mightily, effectively, to dig into our lives, dig into our hearts, take root, help us to change and Change according to your word, Lord. We don't want to change what it says. We want to be changed by it. So help us to do that through this message this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so how do we run to Jesus? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, says, this is on the heels of chapter 11, that great hall of faith, says, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So today we're going to talk about a race that is set before every single one of us. And we have an opportunity to run. But we need to run that race with endurance. And if we're going to run with endurance, then we need to know that there are three things in life that will hold us back. The first thing in life that will hold us back is sin. Sin holds us back. It's a weight. It's baggage that we carry. Every single one of us has it. And this weight that we carry, this sin, starts off and we think we can manage it and, and we think we'll be able to run. And, and you know what? My man ran for a while. He was going pretty, pretty fast. But you notice as he, he rounded the bend and had to come back, what happened? It got slower and slower because sin doesn't just stay. Sin gets bigger. Sin gets weightier. Sin gets exhausting. So some of us are carrying around sin, and it's just time to drop it. We need to let go of the things that once upon a time we thought we, we needed in our lives, we thought we wanted in our lives, because that sin is keeping us from what God has for us. And, and sin isn't just some, some passive thing. The Lord told Cain that the sin was crouching at the door. It's waiting to pounce on us. At every turn, sin, even though the the, the things that we thought we had handled years ago, sometimes they just keep coming back. And you thought you dealt with it, and it comes back. And you thought you were past that. You're you're too old for that, but it comes back. I thought I was beyond that, but it keeps coming back. It's crouching at the door waiting for us. But we have an opportunity to master it. So the first thing in life that will hold you back, sin. The second thing that will hold you back in life, and this was kind of fun to watch, is other people. You see how AJ, as he tried to run, there was no way that he could run full speed because Ella was just holding on to those reins. And that's the same, the same is true in life. Other people will hold us back. And, and it, when we allow other people to have that kind of influence in our lives, Psalm 1-1 says that there's a progression to this. Listen to this. It says, <clears throat> How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Do you, you see the progression there? When you start out and other people are influencing you, you might still be walking your race, but eventually they, they start to hold sway on you and you stand a little bit longer to, just to ponder what they're, they're asking you to do and they, they start to draw you in. And eventually we stop even walking. We're standing. We're sitting. We're just sitting there. And people have, other people have had such an influence in our lives that we're not even moving forward anymore. So other people will hold you back from the, running the race that God has for your life. For those same people that are holding you back, the, the word says that they ambush their own lives. It might seem like they're helping you to get ahead. It might seem like that's the fastest way to the promotion. It might seem like that's the way to get to the in crowd, to be part of the the upper crust. It might seem like that's the the way to have everybody in the neighborhood like you. But when you allow the wrong people to have the wrong kind of influence in your lives, 
or than you influencing their lives, they'll hold you back. And you don't know it, but you're actually ambushing your own life, particularly the life that God has for you. So the first thing that holds you back in life is sin. The second thing in life that can hold you back are other people. The third thing in life that can hold us back, and this is, to me, one of the most dangerous and one of the most, in my life, uh, obvious and consistent. Third thing in life that will hold us back, ourselves. And right now, each of us is thinking about a sin that's holding us back. And each of us can probably think of some people that are having the wrong kind of influence in our lives. But what are the ways that you're holding yourself back? <laughs> what are the ways that you are actually getting in your own way? Paul and the Apostle Paul in Romans talked about how he battled, and, and we're not going to get into whether this is pre-salvation or, or during salvation, but there's a principle here that's true whether someone is saved or not. Uh, and, and I know it bear witnesses, bears witness in my life. In chapter 7, he talks about this struggle. He says in verse 15, For what I'm doing I do not understand, for I'm not practicing what I would like to do but I'm doing the very thing that I hate. Do you ever just wake up with so much shame or, or even just so much anger towards yourself? Why am I continuing to do the same thing that I did two years ago? Why do I fall for the same trap? Why do I care still about that same habit in my life? That I just, or, or why do I care about that same person? Or that, why do I care about this so much that I'm allowing that to get in the way of what God really has for me? Why haven't I applied the word the way I know I should? Why am I still not studying? Why am I, and it goes on and on. The very thing that he doesn't want to do, he does. And the, and the things that he wants to do, he doesn't do. He says, I, I'm doing the very thing I hate. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil I do not want. Skip down to verse 21 of chapter 7. It says, I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wants to do good. For I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man, but I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind. Some of you, it's just your actions. For some of us, we just, our, our flesh gets in the way. For some of us, our minds haven't been renewed to the truth of God's word. And we're allowing our minds to be corrupt. It says, it's waging war and making me a prisoner of the law of sin, which is in my members. He says, wretched man that I am, who will set me free from the body of this death? Are you to the point yet where you're just tired of the same old, same old? You're just tired of waking up feeling guilty every morning? You're just tired of not doing the thing that you know you're supposed to do? Am I the only one? We hold ourselves back, folks. And we don't need to. So, three things that hold us back in life. Sin. Sin. Other people, ourselves. We need to know how to deal with all three of those, but not in our own strength. We need to learn how to deal with those three areas in his strength, his way. It's not because I'm going to work harder that all of a sudden I'm free from sin. I've tried that. It doesn't work. You start the, the resolution on January 1st. What are you doing by January 31st? I don't even know what the, the resolution was anymore. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this every day. I'm going to read Proverbs every single day, but I'm doing it in my own strength. No, no, get a revelation of, of what this word can do in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Dig in. Find someone that help you to pray, but, but don't do this in your own strength. This isn't about us being able to save ourselves. It's not about us just trying harder and all of a sudden we're better people. It's not, it's not even about just you having the best, most comfortable life that you can imagine. It's really, it, that's secondary. This is about living the life that God wants for you so you can do the things that, that he wants to do through you, but the things that only he can do through you. Not the things you can do in your own strength. We're talking about the things, and this is the upper echelon, we're talking about the things that only he can do through you. If you could do it on your own, it's mm, probably not stretching yourself far enough. If it's in your own strength, we're not there. We want to get to the point where we're doing things that we can only do in his strength. Amen? That's when we know we're starting to run this race with endurance, the race that's set before us. 
But I, if, if you're like me, I want to know, how do I do it? Don't just tell me that these things are holding me back. That doesn't do me any good. I don't want to just be disappointed or, or feeling bad. I don't want to know, how do I do the things I need to do so I can run this race with endurance? How do I run to Jesus? So if you have your Bibles, open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> Three things that will hold us back, but... <clears throat> Excuse me. Three things we need to know. Three things we need to know if we're going to run to Jesus. And I'm basing this out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> I'm going to start in verse 17. The Word of God says, If anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ today? Do you know him? Have you put your faith in him, your trust in him? Have you, has someone told you about the sacrifice that Jesus made? about the, the sins that he paid for? Have you received him in your heart? Have you, have you believed that, that, that he's your Lord, that that, that that is true, that he really did die on a cross for your sins, that he really did rise on the third day? Are you in Christ? If you're in Christ, guess what? The word says you're a new creation. Pastor Larry prayed that this morning, didn't he? You're a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, new things are come. New things have come. New things are here. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. So the first thing you need to know, if you're going to run to Jesus, you need to know who you are. Who you are. I am a new creation. Let me continue. All these things are from God not ourselves, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So the first thing, you need, if you're going to know who you are, you need to know that you are a new creation. The second thing you need to know, according to the word, is that you are an ambassador for Christ. You are an ambassador for Christ. You know what an ambassador means? You know what an ambassador is? When we were uh, working with, with some of the Cuban officials, we, we, the, the ambassador, the Cuban ambassador to the UN, came to a meeting. And that, that ambassador was a representative of the authority in Cuba. He represented the Cuban government to the UN. So an ambassador is a representative who comes from one country or one kingdom, the kingdom of God, to another place and represents the kingdom from which he, he or she comes. And here's the cool thing. The ambassador who represents the king, King Jesus, the ra who represents the king, walks in the same authority as the king, follows the rules of the kingdom. Did you know that? So you, the new creation, who is an ambassador for Christ, you get a chance to walk in his kingdom authority. You get to represent him. And by the way, when you go to this new land we call America, right? or North Syracuse, when you're here, where you set up shop, it, usually as an ambassador, it's called an embassy. And that embassy, that, that property, belongs to the country from which you, you hail. So when we come here as ambassadors of the king, where we go becomes territory of the kingdom. So how do you deal with the issues at work? How do you deal with the issues in your family? How do you deal with your community? How do you do all the things that this church does? You do it as ambassadors, representing the king, walking in that authority, setting up territory for him everywhere you go. That's what it means to be an ambassador, and that's what we are. We're ambassadors for Christ. The word says it. So we need to remind ourselves of that. We need to know that, that we our new creations, we are ambassadors, so that when sin tries to weigh us down, we can take the word, 
instead of letting sin weigh us down, we as new creation, as, as new creations, as ambassadors, can lay a hold of the word and say, no, according to the word, according for me, and when I was in college and got saved, according to Romans 6, 6, I'm no longer a slave to sin. That was freeing for me. When I knew who I was and that I had different rules that I could live by, I knew that I was no longer a slave to sin. Are you a slave to sin? Not if you're in Christ. You don't have to give in. You don't have to give in to the same temptation, to the same habits, to the same things that drew you once, once uh, upon a time. You are free from that. And your old self was, the word says, crucified with him. And not only are you no longer a slave to sin, 6.11 in Romans says, even so consider yourselves dead to sin. So we have a chance to think differently as new creations. Are you considering yourself dead to sin this morning? Do you think that way? Or do you think sin still has a chance to rule over you? So the first thing we need to know if we're going to run this race, we need to know who we are. Especially when sin crouches at the door and tries to draw us in. That's not who I am. The second thing we need to know is, is what we're called to do. What we're called to do. It's back in 2 Corinthians 5, we read that, that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That in Christ, he was reconciling the world to himself, but he's given the ministry of reconciliation to us. You know what that means? That means that we had a problem... Humanity had a problem. God in Christ reconciled us to himself. He made a way for us to get back into relationship with him. We, had, we were fallen. He, he was in an error. We were. He reconciled us to him. Our job, what we're called to do, is actually go and share that good news. People don't know that they're free. They don't know that he paid the price for our sins. They don't know that they don't have to live in darkness, but they, they can walk in his wonderful light. Our calling, our opportunity is to tell people. It's called the gospel. We get to share the gospel with the people around us. As new creations, as ambassadors, we're called to this ministry of reconciliation. Let people know that they are free if they would just believe in Jesus, put their faith, their trust in him. That's a great calling. So this morning, as we think about running our race, are we thinking about that ministry of reconciliation where we can, we can go out to this world and tell people about Jesus and invite them into a relationship and experience the same joy that we have? If you're going to run your race, know who you are, but know that you're called for a purpose. And thirdly, as you, as you think about what we're called to do, as, as you think about who you are, to me, I need to remind myself, whose I am. It's one thing to know who, who I am. It's one thing to know what I'm called to do, but I'm telling you, I need to know whose I am. I belong to Christ. I'm not my own. I, that, I no longer have the right to, to call the shots in my life if I want to run the race that he has for me. In fact, Paul, in, in uh, writing to the Corinthians, told them, he said, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And he, he says, you are not your own. This, this earth suit that I have, it's, it's, it's a, it serves a purpose, but it's not my purpose. My, the job is for the Holy Spirit to tell me where I'm supposed to go, for God to help me to line up with his words so that I can run this race effectively. I want to know that, that where I'm going isn't because I decided to, because I'm not that smart. I kind of screw up stuff a lot. I mean, the only thing I can do is tell people to run around. I'm, I don't have that great of ideas. The message title today, someone else gave me, the, Pastor Steve said, hey, what do you think about this message? I like, I like that better. Run to Jesus. I like it. I, I don't want to call the shots in my life because I've tried it, and it's not that fun to be around. But when I choose to let him call the shots in my life, when I say, Holy Spirit, this is yours. This life is yours. It's not my own. Call the shots in my life. When, when I invited him in and he said that he would abide with me, that means that he could take up residence. 
That means he could start to redecorate the walls of my life. That he could do the, the reconstruction project so that he could start to make something that glorified him. I'm his. If you're in Christ, do you get a revelation that you are his this morning? So we can talk about the things that hold us back. The sin, the other people, the way that we hold ourselves back. We can even know that we, we have to keep our eyes on, on a few things. We have to know that who we are. We have to know what we're called to do. And you know what? We have to remind ourselves whose we are. We have to know all those things. But the question I have is, how do you do it? How do you actually make this work? How do you run this race with endurance? In a way that's not just in your own strength, not just your own way, but God's way. How do I do this? Because I want to do this not just once, not just for a little while. I want to do this the rest of my life. How do I run this race with endurance for the rest of my life? We read Hebrews 12, 1. Let's keep going. Hebrews 12, 2 is the, the key to all of this. Hebrews 12, 1 says, we have this great cloud of witnessing surround us and we're to lay aside those weights and the sin that so easily entangles us, right? And to run with endurance the race set before us. How? Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross and despised the shame and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus is the answer. How do we run this race? We run to Jesus. How do you run it with endurance? You fix your eyes on him, just like Emily fixed her eyes on the finish line so that she could get there first. We fix our eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he first fixed his eyes on us. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. The cross that right before he went in the garden as he swept blood, as he just as he poured his heart out and said, Father, if there's any way, any other way, if there's a plan B, can you tell me now? I really don't want to do this. Nevertheless, he endured that. The scourging, the mockery, the thorns. He endured it all for the joy that was set before him. And he said to every single one of us, you are worth it. You're worth the cross. You're worth the shame. You're worth what I'm going through. So I'm going to run a race with endurance, laying aside the weights, putting the wrong people out of my life, putting the right people in, of influence in my life who will build me up. I'm going to stop sabotaging my own life. I'm going to know who I am I'm going to know what I'm called to do. I'm going to know whose I am because he said it, that we're worth it. I'm going to live this life as a response to what he did on the cross for me. This life, this, this being in Christ, this walk, this life is an act of worship. We respond to the cross by worshiping him through our lives. That's the race that I want to be running. Not just to go run a race. There's a purpose to that. I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus and worship him with everything I have. Imperfectly. I'm going to screw up and get back up, but I'm going to do it for him because he did it first for me. I'm responding to that. Amen? As we think about what we're about to celebrate and commemorate, the illustration of, of his sacrifice. I want us to, to examine our own lives. And in a minute, um, Pastor Larry will come up. I want us to examine our own lives. And what are the sins that are holding us back? Who are the people that are holding us back? What am I doing? Examine our lives. Will you examine your life this morning? And, and then commit to learning who you are, what you're called to do, and getting a stronger revelation of who he is and, and that you belong to him.